So hello and welcome to another live session on uh, in our community on Facebook Live. Uh, just to repeat, we do this every week. Every week at the same time, we're going to offer you free training. Our sole aim is to help you generate more leads, make more placements and earn more money. That's, that's, that's what we're here for. So we'll do these every week. If there's anything in particular you'd like us to cover, please let us know. Today we're joined by uh, a guest, a friend and a client. And um, of course, I'm talking about Michelle Ansel. Michelle, thank you very much for joining us today. Hi, Terry. Lovely to be here. Thank you very much. It was worth paying that fiver to get you here. So uh... More than a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So uh, what we normally do, as you know, we, we, we tell you about different things you can be doing to grow your business. But we thought we'd do something a bit different. We thought we'd bring somebody along that's been on the journey, so to speak. Um, and we're going to ask Michelle uh, about her experience and, and what she's gained from it. So... If I remember correctly, Michelle, if I get any of these wrong, by the way, you let me know that you joined us round about uh, May last year, May, June last year. Yeah. Yeah. So just as the pandemic was biting everybody on the butt um, and everybody's going, ouch, that hurts, you joined us. Yeah. So before we go into that, you know, you know, you know just give us an, an overview of, of who you are and what, and, and what you serve. First of all, let's, let's, let's look at that and then sort of take it from there. Yes, yeah, so I'm a managing partner and founder of Douglas Jackson. We were established um, just over 14 years ago now. We just um, had our 14th birthday um, in April. Um, so, yeah, we serve um, traditionally the customer service contact centre, consumer centric market, um, at a sort of executive and senior management level, predominantly permanent recruitment. Excellent. And you've been going for 40 years. How many do you have in your business? Um, uh, we had, well, with seven, seven or eight consultants. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So, so you joined us just as the pandemic was biting everybody on the butt and, and you joined us. Tell me what your business looked like when, when you joined us um, May, June last year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we were the uh, same as everybody, really. I think the, the trouble with the pandemic is nobody knew what what was happening and everybody was trying to guess what to do did should we furlough should we close the business and sort of you know take a rest um should should we carry on and uh, and you just you didn't know really i mean obviously come march april some of us expected to be six weeks at home or three months at home and it just it seemed that it, it, it wasn't going to turn out that way but nobody knew uh, and, and and everybody had an opinion and you just didn't know which way to turn and for me i just I wasn't sure that I wanted to furlough the team. I, it didn't seem right to me to sort of give up, throw in the towel or just wait it out. And I, I really wanted to do something different. And obviously most of our business, as I'm sure everybody's had, sort of stalled and, and, and you didn't know when it was going to come back, if it was going to come back, because again, none of us knew. So there was a real uncertainty, um, I, I suppose. And, and although you do have that in business anyway, you everything had been we'd just sort of come off our hinges I guess both me personally in terms of what decisions to make and what was best to do because we were in completely unknown territory so so what what was it that you said actually it'd be worth talking to those guys and seeing what what, what was your thinking there I decided that I, I decided that I needed to sort of look for some ideas and some inspiration and probably get some coaching. So I did talk to a couple of, of providers, to be honest, and I, I went on a couple of, um, I suppose, uh, guest webinar events or sort of online networking that was available. And it just so happened that um, one of your uh, outreach uh, cold callers called me and and I took the call because I was in that sort of frame of mind and they said oh you need to talk to Terry and I was like yeah okay let's just book in and then obviously I booked in with you um, and you know the things that you sort of I, I suppose asked me um, uh, they they sort of resonated which which meant I, I, I well I felt yeah okay I'm gonna I'll give this a go. So, so your business then, uh, can, you, can you tell us a bit more about what, what, what you were doing? I'm, look, I'm looking for, I guess, a comparison to where you were, to where you are now. Not necessarily in military terms, but in, in terms of the type of business you're offering to your, to your prospects. So what, what we've changed since then to now? Hmm. Yeah, so um, obviously by being on the programme with yourself, it has completely changed I think it's our mindset and our confidence more than anything. I think the proposition that we had, we sort of 
had a lot of what you help us with in terms of our proposition. But I, I think it helped us realize how much further we could take that and, and so many things that we didn't have to accept or, or settle for. Um, or, you know, typically you can, you sort of, you start to panic or you think, what are you not doing right? Or so it gave us lots of ideas to sort of shift our fees um, to sort of increase um, the types of roles that we work on to work with a different type of, of client um, and and sort of, you know, do all of the things you want to do, but you feel stuck in a place where you can't quite get there. I, 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 so it, it's moved the business significantly in terms of the, the type of work that we work on and the fees that we're now charging um, and, and obviously the sort of customers that we are working with. Mm. You've made a really good point there about confidence and, and, and I do verify this. Most uh, uh, recruitment and search firm owners, uh, one of the challenges they have is around what, what, what's going on in their head and, and, and that, that confidence. And there's a problem with that. If, if, you, if you don't believe in yourself and have confidence in yourself, it's, it's then, it's then difficult to convince anybody else to engage with if you, if you don't truly believe in yourself. Um, so really good point there. Um, and I think the other point you meant there about settling, I think, again, very common. Most recruitment and search business owners, they have this goal, this dream, it doesn't quite go that way and they settle for less and they, at some level, lower, l lower their standards. Um, yeah. and does that sound about right? Yeah, and I think yeah. certainly you do do that all the time because you think, you know, oh, well, I'd really like to achieve this, but yeah, we've got this. And and certainly I think with the pandemic, there was people, and, and, and I know a lot of recruiters or competitors were sort of saying, well, just get any work, just get anything, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, just get it, just win the work, do whatever price you need to do. And, and I thought the last thing that I want to do is end up in that market with everyone scrapping for the same work and the same business and doing things that we're not very good at or, you know, that, that we we really can't do the best work that we, we normally like to do. You know, so I didn't want to go down that road. But you do, I think, in general, in business as well, you sort of, it, it, you know, recruitment's not are difficult it's not rocket science but it is hard work it's relentless and every day and every week and every month you have to turn up and and you know it can wear you down unless you've got some really sort of strong foundations and and sort of beliefs that you can you, that you hold true to yourself and and you stick with them and you you sort of believe and as I say have that confidence to to sort of achieve what you really want mm, good point yeah anything to add to that Drew? yeah just a you know, one of the reasons we wanted to get you one is that, um, you know, saw on your LinkedIn the other day, and, you know, obviously we've seen behind the scenes as well, that uh, over the past five weeks, you've, you've won 10 retainers. And just for people listening, like, uh, you know, we spoke on the group calls and stuff from 12 months ago. The norm for you guys was to get five retainers per year. So one well, interest in knowing, you, you spoke about mindset, but what was it that um, I guess what was the shift for you, for you where you said, look, I'm, I'm no longer gonna, I'm no longer gonna work on contingency. I'm, I'm now only gonna go down this route. What was the shift for you there? Um, I think we've always, um, we've always offered retain work, and, and as you quite rightly say, we, you know, we've probably done a handful of assignments every year, really, uh, on a on a retained basis. But you know, we've over the years we've been so successful, or we, you know, we've got so much work with clients and contingency client and PSL clients but if you look back even before the pandemic that work was becoming more difficult to win um, uh, you were getting less roles from those types of clients the fees were being squeezed and um, the competition was bigger um, and 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 I think that realization that do I suppose in some respects that the pandemic and obviously has also been on this program it gave you that thinking time because we didn't have a lot of roles to work on and we had opportunity to try different things and think about things which we probably wouldn't have had in normal business as usual times but it, it, it you know it, you do eventually or I did eventually just come to the decision that you know we've just got to make the shift because if we carry on trying and being in one camp or another it probably won't really happen um, and as I said before it's just having that belief in your convictions and that confidence to, to go for it and know that what you're doing is 
the best for you, but not only the best for you, it's the best for your clients. And, and, and if, if we believe in that service and we believe that's the best way for them to achieve, then that's what we need to offer. Um, and there are obviously um, clients who want to work that way. And, and, and so we, we just, well, I just made the decision that that was it. And, and since we did that, it just became so much easier because we weren't trying to offer different options or sort of trying to outsell ourselves or outdo ourselves really. And, and it, 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 it just became much simpler. It was a simpler proposition and either people wanted it or they didn't. And that was fine. Um, and, 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 and so it just, it, it just got to a point where, you know, I think I just got to a point and said, well, no, I'm going to do it. And, and, it, it was just I don't want to play about anymore I do want to start realizing and achieving the things that I suppose that we deserve and that you know we we we, we can get really mm. that's interesting you said we talked about making this decision was I'm just curious because often when people make a decision and that's quite a major decision for the business was there any one thing that you thought enough already I'm I'm, I'm making a different decision was there any one thing can you remember Michelle um, I, I can't, I can't think if it was one, it, I did get to that enough already. And I just think, I, I, I suppose, well, you know what it's like. And, it, uh, you know, everyone that does contingency recruitment, you know, you can put your life and soul into something and through no fault of your own, you get nothing or you get to the final stage and your candidates picked at the post or whatever, or, you know, you spend 12 months on an assignment and a candidate's due to start next week and they ring you up and tell you that they're no longer starting, you know, and, and you just, you're not getting paid. And when I look at, you know, the team and, and everything that, you know, we do a really good job and we, we do do a really good job that, you know, we've got really high quality levels and uh, really strong processes. And it is just so frustrating. As I say, well, it is becoming harder to win the work. And if you think, well, we're only getting paid on 20, 30, 40% probably at best, then it, it seems crazy to carry on doing that, doesn't mm. it? Um, and you know, I'm yeah. not, I'm not crazy. So uh, I, I, I think it's best to sort of might take a different stance and do do something different, really, um, and not be sort of fearful, I guess, of of people saying no or or not wanting what we, what we've got to offer. Um, what's coming? So, just to finish through, is, is your your strong mind and this this. This total belief you have about yourself now, um, that's, that's really apparent as you're talking there, uh, Michelle. Uh, yeah, I just want to say, just want to commend you on that. It's, it's great to hear you in this, talking so candidly about, about that shift. But, so thank you very much. O over to you, Drew. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to say, so that's, that's 10 retainers over a five-week period. Um, I, I get that you made the decision, but what did you do or what are you doing to, you know, bring, so, how, so just, to, just to be clear, how, out of those 10 retainers, how many people have made those? I know not all of them have been made by you. Four. Four. So four, four. different people. Mm -hmm. What have you done to sort of, I guess, get them on board with your way of thinking? Because, you know, they've probably been doing contingency the whole, their, you know, their whole career as well. Yeah, I think again, it's the program obviously helped. As you know, they've all come on all the all the uh, sessions uh, as many as they can, and um, I mean we talk about it as a team continuously. It just doesn't stop, and they all seem to eventually. You know, some have took a little bit longer, and I'm not saying that all of the team are there at the moment, um, but I think. Having that confidence, um, having that support, really, I suppose, from myself that says, you, you know, you don't have to bill this month. Um, you don't have to worry about getting that client, that contingency work on. You can say no and you can believe in yourself. And if you follow this process, it will come. And I suppose giving them that bit of freedom or that bit of confidence as well, um, you know, it helps them to try and and they can fail can't they because that's what we all need to do is get comfortable with what we're trying and, and sort of fail and sort of learn from it so I suppose uh, you know again they all know the value of what they do uh, you know most of them have worked for me for quite some time they're seasoned recruiters and and they all want to get paid and, and have these relationships with their clients where they feel they are a trusted partner a trusted advisor you know, where they actually get to collaborate and work in partnership rather than, you know, just be somebody that, that you know, you're constantly chasing someone for feedback or you're chasing for this or chasing for that or they won't talk to you on the phone or, you know. It, um, so 
I mean, they, it was just really giving them the platform, giving them the the tools, uh, I suppose, the mindset, the information and the time to, to, to sort of do it, really, and, and just to try to succeed, to fail and, and sort of, you know, us all come together and, and learn as a, as a team from each other. And I think once one person started to, to sell it, everyone, you know, we'd share it, we'd record those, um, we, we'd record sort of do buddy calls, you know, with each other, we'd record what we said and, and what um, they, they could learn from it. And it, it, it just gives them, I suppose, more confidence um, and they try it yeah. and, you know, it's, it's worked on some and not on others. Awesome. So, the uh, what I want to get down to is so one of the things that we look at with um, you know with growing your business and selling pennies is obviously like the the marketing piece that and uh, how, I guess specifically how you drive people into a sales meeting or sales appointment with you, you, yourselves. Um, what are you doing, or what did you change from a marketing standpoint? Yeah, so um, we upped our marketing massively um, and obviously we changed how we were uh, messaging and, and, and I think before that point we've probably been marketing, we were quite active anyway and we, we had quite an active brand on social media and um, but our email marketing was very um, sporadic at best. Um, so we really sort of went to town on, on sort of, you know, building the email marketing and sort of our social posts and sort of our interaction with, you know, our ideal customer, et cetera. And, and just we started, cha we changed our messages to talk more to that that client rather than we'd probably been marketing in the past more to sort of candidates really rather than sort of prospects um, and that's why we never really saw anything come from from our marketing or our, even some posts would have really high interactions but we we just never got any work through those those channels or, or routes really it just seemed fruitless and you know you think well we're doing all the right things but what's happening so it was just about looking at what we were trying to say what messages we wanted to put out there what we wanted to be associated with um and 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 we changed we changed that dramatically you know we spent an awful lot of time on the marketing on the on, on our social presence and, and obviously on what we say and how we say it and what, who we say it to really one thing I've, I've noticed uh, as we've gone on this journey is that initially a lot of your message you're right was to the candidate it was also about your business as well and what you, what you what you can do and and one of my observations was a bigger shift is he started communicating to the potential hiring manager and you were talking about their problem and their challenges and, is, and i mean the shift to me uh, watching you do that was was quite dramatic because because then your 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 message is resonating with those hiring managers when you you talk about the problems so again i want i want to uh, congratulate congratulate you on that and i know we were talking a few well, i think last week or the week before and you said that uh, one of the biggest differences you, you notice is that when you call people they knew who you were. Can you tell us a bit more about that? How, yeah, how you um, felt about that, Anton? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, we, 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 we're calling people that perhaps we've never spoke to before or we haven't spoke to for a long time, you know, and we'd say, oh, hi, it's Michelle from uh, Douglas Jackson. Do you, know, do you know who we are? And they'd go, oh, yeah, absolutely. I've seen your posts or um, absolutely. I've, I've read such and such or I watched your video. And so, you know, they certainly seem to be the awareness of, of us and, and, and sort of our brand and our personal image had grown significantly. Um, and then following that up with the call and having a conversation and people were really, and um, you know the message really resonated with them or it didn't and and they were quick to say you know I'm not for you I know you do x or y but I'm not interested and that that's brilliant you know it's great too and um, but for those that that did like it and have have liked it you know they've been keen to say yeah I do see it and you don't realize the reach it has really and people start to come back to you with your with your messaging and with your sort of um, your processes and your you know what the values that you stand for and so that was that was really uh, really good and and it is continues to be really great mm. you just said something there that a lot of people would find amazing but i just want to what would you say something because you said there re rejection's good too if somebody says look you're not for us people listen to it they'll be going what could you just explain a bit more why why that is a good thing 
Well, yeah, I mean, again, you know, we all, we know again in recruitment, we get loads of no's, you know, and, and but we're always fighting against the no and we're always trying to overcome objections or keep people on the phone for longer or, you know, try and uh, sort of uh, challenge a, a, a low fee um, uh, that they've got. And again, you, you come to a position or if you can come to a position where you go, well, I'm not interested in that anymore and there are going to be, uh, well, the fact is there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people that I never work with. The reality is, you know, each year I only need so many certain types of clients at, at the fee that I want to earn. And, you know, I, I can do a great job for those. I don't need to serve everybody. And certainly, you know, my proposition isn't going to be right for everybody. Um, and, and I only really want to work with those customers who want to work what or want the sort of service that I provide if they want something different that's great but I'm not the right person for them so it does it it takes that pressure um off you that you're trying you stop selling to a, a people and, and instead you start sort of just talking to them um, and if they if, if they're not interested they're not interested and and, and I just wish them all the best um, really you're looking for that ideal client aren't you that ideal customer um, the one that that does resonate with what you've got to offer or is looking for what what you've got to offer whatever that might be mm. this one, great. On that, on, so yeah if you um if you look at your sales process now um you know obviously to sell or to, to work with a client on a contingency basis compared compared to working with them on a retained basis the sales process has to be different in terms of what you say and do during that sales meeting can you tell us a bit about, you know, what you're doing there? What 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 shifts have you made in that area? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it, we've stopped we stopped selling completely. We don't we don't we don't sell anything now. <laughs> um, we just talk to our customer or client about them and their challenges and their you know their requirements and what would work for them and then ultimately if we have a, a service and a proposition that would work for them we'll present that and then they can decide whether they they they, they want that or not and if we don't we, we tell them we're not we're not the right offer for them really so it's it's completely changed from as I say we would normally go into calls and and immediately we'd just be trying to sell and present what we've got to offer whereas now we only interested in what the client wants or needs or what problems or opportunities and challenges they they have again it would be so alien to to many recruiters so there is this thing i'm a recruiter i have to sell and, and one of the things that we advocate is that you don't sell and let the client buy i mean yeah it's just fantastic to hear that that you're letting the client buy rather than you sell thanks for that michelle and so how do you deal with like um you know cause I, I know sort of a lot of your clients will be used to you know working with recruiters on a contingency basis um even maybe with your firm in, in in the past how do you deal with like i guess getting them to see the value of going in you know firstly going re retained but then going retained with you how do you how do you deal with that sort of objection or are you getting those object objections yeah, and uh, I mean, certainly it can be harder, I think, to convert your existing clients, strangely, considering they're the ones that have, you know, a good service or know you extremely well. I think because you're in already in that in that space where you provide a service at a certain fee that they're used to, um, it, it can be very difficult to sort of change that mindset. And, and sometimes it's not possible. Um, and, and, you know, we are um, walking away from a lot of our previous clients now and um, in terms of you know that when they're offering us work that's not at the fee that we want or it's not at the value that we want anymore and um, it can be slightly easier with new new customers um it, it certainly but i mean yeah we're just trying to sort of educate them and, and and again ask the questions ask them what they'd like to change in the process what they would improve if they had the chance what they liked about things what they didn't and that you know we've evolved and that we've took the last year to sort of revisit our processes and, 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 and structure and, and we've come out with this because we feel it's better and it will deliver a better service for them and would they be interested um, but it, it, it you know it isn't always it's not easy it's not like everybody wants wants it and wants to wants to go with it mm. awesome and then so for the ones who um, I guess aren't your past clients um, are they, yeah, I guess, what's their feedback to you when they go down the retained, retained route? Are they enjoying it more? They think it's a better service and contingency. What's their sort of feedback they're giving to you? 
Yeah, so um, I mean, we've had some really good um, uh, feedback and and some really, um, uh, I mean, we've we've just well, we've got some second stages on one of the retainers, and they they want to talk to us about two more roles, and you know, we've just uh, one of the others that we've retained, they've just offered us another role with another one in three to six months, so they really sort of bought into the process. Um, and um, some of them, it, it, it's strange because even some of them, you know, they'll they'll say, look, I don't I don't like when, you know, recruiters are chasing me for feedback or when recruiters are trying to force me into an interview or they're sending me CVs every day. And, and it's just like having a process that works for them and having a partner that work, is working for them. And it's completely open. It's completely transparent. And, you know, and they feel that you've got them. And, and so, you know, those 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 individuals who want that service that's what we provide and 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 they do they they look to you like a trusted partner um, and somebody that they can confide in and that will help you know solve those business challenges and and, and help them be more successful ultimately awesome yeah and so again real revelations helping them to be more successful it's again it's, your language, Michelle, is all about the client and what and what's what's good for them. It's yeah, that that comes across so strongly that you just want to get what's what, what what's best for them. I mean, and we talk about that a lot. How did you find it initially doing that shift from you know the, the classical sales person, uh, recruiter rather, that gets a foot in the door and and tries to sell to what we encourage, which is actually don't sell. Get that. How did you personally find that that transition? Um, it is hard because you want to naturally start telling people, you know, all these anecdotal sort of references and, and sort of, you know, give them these case studies and tell them what you've done. You, you naturally want to immediately gravitate towards why you're the best and why you're so successful and why you're right. And you, you do just have to pull yourself back and, and stop. So initially it is quite difficult. Um, but once you get to do it and once you sort of get comfortable with it, it it's it's far easier um it, it, it it's really quite strange because a lot of the time you know now with you know the marketing and the research I do and the conversations that I have I feel like I'm not doing my job I feel like I'm not selling anymore and I'm not a recruiter anymore because you know you you just don't have that pressure on yourself and and, and sort of you know trying to achieve those sort of decision maker contacts or, or what have you it's, it's just it just does it it does change how you feel and it, it's it can it's quite strange but it is it's difficult everything is difficult isn't it change is difficult it takes time to 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 sort of get into new habits but ultimately if you stick with it and you can do it it is it is a lot a lot better um and a, mm. a lot a lot it, well it seems easier seems effortless when it works but of course you're still going to get all the no's and the, and the rejections but it doesn't seem to to matter as much mm. is it, one of the reasons it doesn't matter because you you know you've, you've got those other, these other leads and other people that you could be calling anyway so yeah yeah you know um, the process will work for you uh, uh, you know it's it's, just, it's, it's the same you, you know if you make 100 cold calls even if you're the worst cold caller in the world you'll get some work <laughs> but you know if you follow this process that you know there'll be another another call another meeting you know in a day or even in an hour or you know next week ultimately and um, so yeah it's it's just having that constant pipeline and those constant processes that support you really Hmm. So you talked about at the beginning, you know, when we first, you know, the peak of the pandemic and you were predominantly contingent, you know, with a, with a little bit of reta uh, retained to here we are today. So all through the pandemic, you've, you've gone from that to this, this fully, uh, fully 100% uh, uh, retained model. I think it's fair to say, Michelle, and I think this is really important. The journey hasn't been easy. I, I mean, could you share some of the, some of the challenges along the way? Because it, it wasn't the case of you know, one day you were doing that one day and it was just it was just like that. You get to a stage where you win 10 retainers in, in four or five weeks. You know, just tell us about some of the ups, the highs and the lows of, of this journey. Oh, yeah, of course. It's it's been extremely hard. And, uh, you know, I mean, like anything in life, if you want to achieve anything, it takes a lot of practice, doesn't it? And uh, a lot of commitment as well. And I suppose. For one, um, you know, putting in place all the processes, practicing the processes, failing, tweaking, you know, continuously improving the language, the communication, you know, the training of the team, getting the team on board, people learn at different stages, you know, and also the fact that, you know, we didn't 
we 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 did have a good a good summer but you know come the back end of the year with the second lockdown all the mm. all the leads and uh, went and you know we had some really bad months and as a business owner when the revenue is not at the level that you want it to be when you've got teams to support it's it's awful and and you know i'm i, I still do now i'm i still will wake up in the middle of the night and am i making the right decisions what happens tomorrow if what happens if and I don't, you, you know, you, you you're always questioning whether you're doing the right thing because um, there isn't a roadmap. You know, there's there's not someone to hold your hand as a business leader. You've got to you've got to make the decisions and you've got to believe that they're the right ones and go with your conviction, haven't you? And if something changes, then you have to change as well. But I mean, it certainly hasn't been easy. You know, we've had some really tough months. Um, you know, it's been uh, it's difficult to change, as I say, and to get everybody on board and to implement all these processes has taken a lot of time to write all these different uh, um, uh, sort of, I, I suppose, models that have taken a lot of time for us to implement different systems. It's all taken time, effort, you know, commitment, but it's that consistency that eventually has started to come. And, and, you know, the successes that we've had, they're very short, you know, they're only in the last two to three months. So I still, it doesn't feel like business as usual for me. And we're still, we're not quite at 100% um, retained, Terry. You know, some of the team are still serving some of their PSL contingency recruitment customers, but I am encouraging them to walk away from that business. Um, but they, they do make their own decisions. They, you know, they work as autonomous empowered consultants. It's up to them, but I will, encourage them and do encourage them to do less of that um, unless they get you know what what they deserve and what they feel they want to do but yeah, of course it's, it's been really hard and and and, and I, I don't feel that we're in this really great successful place even now even though we are having some success which is brilliant you know it's 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 I, I believe that it will continue and I very much hope that it will but we've still got an awful lot more work to continue doing and it is a journey it's not it's not a quick fix it's not an overnight success it, you know if we stop doing what we've been doing I very much expect that <laughs> we'll stop getting some of the success that we have had already yeah I think what you said there um it's not easy um it, it, it is a journey isn't it absolutely Michelle Michelle and I know it might be difficult to pick like one thing, but if you could sort of, um, you know, if you could sort of highlight one thing or pick one thing that you've got from in the program over the last over the last year or so, whether it be, you know, a particular marketing strategy or a mindset or, or whatever it happens to be, that you could sort of give as a piece, piece of advice now, what, I guess, what's, what's been the, the best thing for you? What's worked best for you? Um, I do think it's probably been the mindset and the confidence. I mean, there has been an awful lot of um, strategies that you've shared which in themselves are fantastic but without the right mindset without the right sort of confidence and 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 uh, you you can't you won't achieve it with with all the systems tools and technology you know you have to you have to believe and and I think just with the program and and sort of being able to share and talk to the people and and, and sort of learn and have the constant support all of that has has done um has done loads for, for the mindset, for the confidence. And I, I, that has to be the, the most important thing, I think, regardless of all the rest. Mm. I happen to think it's most of it, actually. Most of your success comes from your, comes from your thinking. We can give you all the super ninja marketing and sales uh, techniques, but it, it is about you know, the conversation you're having, having yourself. And part of that is about your own personal self-worth as well. You know, and, Self-esteem. It's a really good point there. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Michelle. That's been, that's been brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I suppose my takeaway, listen to you, I really enjoyed it because what you talked about was um, the key thing was was confidence. You touched on it again there about uh, how initially, and you're not alone there, Michelle. Many recruiters are kind of lower their standards. They go in, this will be our standards, but for whatever reason, they lower it, and then they and then they accept the lower standards as, as a norm. I think the other thing you said was um, re rejection is good. I mean, that should be music to any recruiter's ears because we get as a recruiter, you're going to get a lot of rejection. But your your take on that rejection that you're not here to serve everybody, and you and you could never serve every potential client out there. It's you know, it's just a, a select a select few. And you shared it with us about changing the message. So rather than talking to the client, 
sorry, the candidate, you know, in your, in your social media post, you then started talking to the potential hiring manager and talk about their problem. That was a thing I noticed, you know, quite early on when we started working that when you started changing the message. And the little key takeaway here is stop selling, let them buy. Again, probably alien to many recruiters when you say, you know, you don't sell retained, you let the hiring manager buy retained. It's, it is, it's, it's as different as chalk and cheese. And one of our mantras is that the, the hiring manager should want to buy from you more than you want to sell to them. And, you know, you've just summed it up there. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much indeed. Is there any, anything that you want to add, Drew? Uh, no, again, just thank you for, thank you for sharing everything. Yeah, I'm good. So thank you very much indeed. That's a, that's a fiver and a glass of wine for that term, <laughs> at, at the very least. <laughs> you know, awesome. Seriously, Michelle. Thank you very, very much indeed. Um, Hey, listen, uh, we do this, we, 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 we do some form of training. It's slightly different this week uh, with having Michelle on. If you want to get more information, if you go to makemoreplacements.com forward slash apply, you can speak to one of our team, have a jump on the call for about 10 minutes and they go through it in a bit more detail. If you're an owner or director of a recruitment search firm, you want, to, you want to get more business, if you want to make more money, if you want to find a way of getting clients to buy from you rather than you have to sell. Just, just jump on the call. There's no cost or obligation for the call. You can speak to one of our teams and we'll share some information with you. If we can help, we will do. And if we can't, we'll, we'll try and point in the direction of somebody that can. But ultimately, we're here to help. We'll be back the same time next week at 1500 UK time. Until then, folks, take care, take action and be relentless. <laughs>